today, a uh, lot to talk about. Um, we'll start with the number one question. I actually was um, getting some dinner the other night and, and ran into a client of mine, their family. And the first question out of their mouth was not, hey, Jeff, good to see you. It was, are you going to Tokyo? Which is like Frank asked a couple minutes ago, is it happening? Um, and um, uh, nothing that I've seen has said anything other than it is happening. I think it's, I mean, I'm very confident at this point that it's gonna happen uh, for a number of reasons. One is um, it's pretty late to pull the plug now. Uh, we are at, you know, T minus uh, 90 days, um, give or take. And um, the, you know, you gotta figure that people like, you know, NBC, NBC, NBC sends a crew of, in a typical summer Olympics, they'll have thousands of people there. I mean, this just, so the logistics of getting all of that done, there's probably people flying over now in preparation. So to, to put a stop to it now, um, if you guys have been watching NBC, a lot of advertising happening right now, uh, talking about the Olympics and, and how that's, um, um, you know, what's gonna happen with that and how it's in full planning. Um, and the amount of communications coming from TOCOG uh, and the USOC has been pretty um, extensive. So I, I think honestly that it will happen. It's just now a matter of how it happens. So there's been some rumors um, that lately uh, that they're gonna try to limit the amount of media there um, and which will be really interesting. Uh, I, as I mentioned in previous um, Zoom calls, they've given us a lot of protocols as far as the social distancing for photographers and, and limitations of the press center and everything. But uh, one rumor that I heard uh, last week is that they may limit photographers to certain venues, which would really be a bummer for me. I, I really don't want to be limited to just you know one or two or three venues. I like, I like having free reign to go shoot whatever I want. Uh, it's more fun for the blog to be able to share you with you guys different different uh, venues and different experiences and different sports. So um, with that said, I have uh, um, not had any definitive uh, word from IOC or the Tokyo Organizing Committee to say that that's the case. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, we are full bore, ready to go. Um, like I said, get the second vaccine tonight for me. I see that Michael said he had some serious side effects, the second one uh, for 36 hours. I, I hope that's not the case uh, for me, but I am looking forward to getting that done. Um, and uh, and I am, uh, like I said, very hopeful that Japan will go as scheduled and, and open uh, for me to be there. I, um, I'm gonna be there a little bit early. I'll be there a couple of days before the games start. And the goal is to really kind of share with you guys. I probably will not be able to do a Zoom call from there because just probably don't have time. But uh, definitely the blog. I will be uh, right now. My blog, uh, especially during COVID, I normally blog every week, and, and I just did a blog yesterday, which I'll talk about. Um, but typically, um, you know, the blog is weekly. Um, Olympics is daily, and I plan on really uh, leading up to the Olympics. So maybe in the June timeframe, maybe mid June, start talking about Olympic, Olympic preparations um, uh, and new equipment that I might be taking and that kind of good stuff. Um, so not just from Canon, but maybe some other stuff too. Um, so that's kind of, uh, that'll be my kind of my lead in uh, to the Olympics. And again, once I'm there, I plan on really kind of trying to give everybody a behind the scenes um, of what it's like in Tokyo to be a foreigner because they don't want it. They really don't want a lot of foreigners there. But I'm sure we'll be treated well because they treat people well. But um, it will be interesting nonetheless just to see um, what the experience is and to build a blog that. So um, anyway, uh, so so again, I, I'm, I'm figuring that we are fully in and going. Um, and I mean, contractually, I'm already set up uh, with Team USA, that's all done. Um, I am having discussions actually right now with Team Australia as well, maybe doing some things for them um, and another group as well. So I may have additional things I'm doing there beyond my Team USA responsibilities, that will be interesting. Um, still to be determined. 
so it's really fluid right now, um, just with the, the continued uncertainty of COVID, but getting better. Um, and then even with Beijing, I mean, there's still question marks for Beijing, not only with the whole COVID thing, but also with the US government. So um, uh, this will be the two years or two and a half years of uncertainty <laughs> just in everything at this point. So um, that's pretty much what I know for now. Like I said, I, I think I, I'm, I'm about 90% confident that three months from now I'll be on a plane. Um, actually, the three months from now I'll be there. Actually, be, I'll be shooting at this point. Um, let's see here. Uh, seeing some more, Max had some side effects uh, from the vaccine. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, Michael, uh, uh, it could be, is it Mikhail? Sorry if I pronounce it wrong, or Michelle. Uh, wants to know if I'm under NDA on the R3. I can tell you I'm officially not currently under NDA with the R3. So I can still talk about it a little bit. Um, that's probably, this could probably be the last Zoom call where that's the case. Um, but anyway, um, so let's talk about um, the, the R3. Um, let me, let, let me start first with the blog. I did the blog yesterday. I dropped it. Um, I finally got a chance to shoot uh, three different sports using the, um, I use the R6 for some of it and I use a 1DX Mark III for some as well. And um, in the blog, I explain why I, I switched back and forth. So the first thing I wanted to do is try the R6 for sports because I've heard, you know, a lot of people ask me questions and email me and wanted to know how it handled it. And it did really, really well. Um, in the eye detection mode, it didn't always do well if there are times when the athletes would run away. It would still track the back of their head, but the problem is it might drift to a different athlete. Um, so if I'm trying to key in on, let's, in this case, I was shooting a high school sports. If I'm trying to key in on the, on the, the, the girls from Prospect High School and it's tracking the eyes of one of the opponent, opponents um, and I don't want that, I found a little bit of drifting there. And so uh, what I ended up doing probably within the first 10 minutes of shooting is I left eye detection off and switched back to a center point servo back button focus. And I shot the R6 that way. And it did great. Honestly, it did very, very well. Um, and then when I went to shoot, uh, so I had a client actually hiring me to shoot their son, who's a baseball player and also a water polo player for his senior portraits. They wanted action shots. And actually the family hired me not only to shoot their, their son, but all seniors on the team as a gift to the families. Um, and when I did that, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna break out the 1DX Mark III, which is of course a sports camera and the one that was designed for the Olympics, or you know, that was the whole purpose of that camera for me was to take it to the games. And of course, the reason I did so is the processor on it and the focus speed is so damn fast on the 1DX Mark III. And I figure if I'm not gonna use the eye detection mode, of the R6, I might as well just use the 1DX Mark III. It's got faster memory cards, faster buffer clear, um, and honestly, faster focusing is my guess in general. So I used the 1DX Mark III for the bulk of the shooting. And then actually, as I was blogging, I realized that with water polo, it tends to be more um, with people facing me. And I thought, you know, it'd be interesting in water polo to actually try to use um, the face tracking of the R6. So uh, I'll probably go out and shoot some more water polo uh, fairly soon if I can get a, uh, get some good scrimmage. And I maybe do some stuff. I'd like to do some of the higher level athletes like the Olympic team if I can. So um, stay tuned for that. Now, ultimately, it'd be really great if I could try the R3 with that, um, which I will get to uh, in a second here. So um, let's talk about let's talk about the R3. And I'm sure you guys will have some questions. A lot of them I may or may not um, um, know because first of all, when Canon announced the R3 and I knew that something was coming from Canon, um, we'd had some discussions. I thought it might be the R1. It was not the R1, it's the R3. And don't expect an R1 right away. Um, I can tell all of you that um, I've probed a little bit on that. And my guess is so typically the way it work, works with uh, Canon, Nikon and others is their, their cycle for the top end pro camera is every four years 
for the Summer Olympics is typically when they would roll out their flagship product. My guess is that the R3 is that uh, interim release for this that may or may not make this Olympics. I think it will. Um, and then there'll be an R1 in two years. That's my guess. And this is just guessing uh, for uh, maybe for Beijing Winter Olympics. Uh, sorry, not for Beijing because that's in nine months, whatever it is. Um, but for the Summer Olympics in, in Paris, in, in France, um, we might have an R1 then. That's kind of my guess for timing. Um, that's not to say that Canada is going to rest on their laurels between the R3 for another two and a half years. Um, they'll probably have some other stuff and as well as more lenses and things. So, um, so what they did is they did not announce the R3 as a product. They announced it as development, which is basically Canon's way of saying, we're teasing you to let you know that it's coming. So for those of you that are looking to buy a Sony A1 or the new Nikon, don't, because we're coming out with our own thing. That's basically what that is. Um, and so what they do is they, they release this and they give us enough information that it whets our appetite, but we still don't have enough information to say, oh, gee, this is all the features that I want. So um, I, I wrote some, some notes here uh, to kind of talk to you guys about. Uh, so a couple of things that um, came to mind for me, and the first and foremost is um, the 30, well, a couple of things, but the 30 frames per second is really interesting to me. Um, typically, I'm used to more in the 12 to 14 and up to 20 frames a second, which is uh, what we have with the mirrorless. And um, so going to 30 frames a second is pretty incredible because I've said this years ago uh, when I went to, I believe it was the London Olympics, when I started shooting diving. And you realize that I think at the time we were shooting 12 frames a second and it wasn't enough. The divers were going so fast that if you wanted to get it with their hands, just breaking the plane of the water, uh, 12 wasn't enough. You'd have them here, here's the water, you'd have them here and you'd have them there. And so you wanted to get them with their fingertips just entering, um, you needed more than 12. Um, that's not true if you're doing portraits of people or shooting a wedding, but clearly for sports and wildlife, 30 frames a second is really interesting. Um, as I've said in uh, a previous blog, I, I, I want to have it user selectable. I would like to see Canon give me 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. That's probably asking too much. Give me 10, 20, and 30, something like that. But don't make it just 0 or 30. You know, 1 or 30, that drives me crazy. So that's the one issue with the R5 and the R6 right now if you're in full electronic mode, electronic shutter. It is 0. It's, you know, it's 1 frame of time or 20. Um, so I'm hoping that's a user selectable thing. Um, same thing with resolution, which they have not said what the resolution will be. There's a lot of rumors that it's gonna be very high res. And that's something that I'm torn on because if I'm shooting in Africa and I'm shooting wildlife and I know, I think I'm gonna to need to crop an image, it'd be really nice to have 40 or 50 megapixels or 60. If I'm shooting the Olympics, I don't need 60 megapixels. 20 is fine with me. So I'd love to see and there's been some rumors on the R3 as a, uh, I forget what they called it. They didn't call it a variable or selectable resolution. They just said there's some enhancement with resolution. And it wasn't implied that it was more, it was just implied that it's something different. So like I said, I'm hoping that they give us a, um, an, an ability to kind of throttle it up or down depending on what we're shooting. I think that'd be really cool. Um, I'm gonna stop for one second, just look at the questions coming through here. Um, Am I using case A auto for the servo setting when using the game? I actually, Mike, I don't remember which case I was using. I think I was in case A on the 1DX Mark III. Um, where's my 1DX Mark III? Um, hold on, I'll tell you. I don't remember where I put it. That's bad when you have so many cameras you can't find it. Hold on. Oh, it's behind me. Because I did not change it. Uh, case setting for this one. Uh, I was actually in auto, uh, case A auto was what I was in for shooting. Um, let's see here. And do I use double back button focus on the R6? Uh, no, I, I don't even know what double back button is. I use the standard back button focus, 
which is kind of weird on the R6 because if you're in eye tracking, you don't even really need it. Um, but I do use it. Um, someone's asking, and I mentioned put this in that blog, and I didn't. Um, there are different uh, area zones for the R6 as, and the 1DS Mark III, um, as opposed to just the center point. One of the things I did change for water polo uh, when I was shooting that game is I did actually use the center point with the points around it, um, which I found uh, a little bit more accurate. So sometimes I'll change it up as I'm shooting, just depending on what I'm getting and I'm looking at the take rate. One of the things I've gotten very used to on the R6 is I can put my eye up to the camera and look in and see very cleanly whether I'm sharp or not, even if I'm zoomed in, but I can look right in the eyepiece and see how the image looks, which is way better than looking at the LCD. And of course with the 1DX Mark III, I try to do that. And of course you can't because it's not mirrorless. Um, so um, let's see here, uh, 30 frames a second. What would I shoot? Uh, would I shoot video instead? You know, when I used to make movies back with my movie camera back in the old days, it was a Super 8 camera and uh, it was eight frames a second. So with these cameras doing 30, you could shoot. And I've seen people do full videos shooting stills. And inversely, you could shoot video and grab out frames from the video. But I would use 30 frames a second, uh, which I plan on doing at the Olympics. I would use it very sparingly because it's a lot of images to go through. Um, Let's see here, uh, on the R6, on the water polo last week, let's see here, uh, Terrell did use, let's see here, did use the R6. Pretty good with eye detect, okay. Uh, excellent with tracking, no eye detect. Yeah, I, th I think that, um, uh, Terrell, I, I agree that I think that the eye, eye detection actually um, in the R6 can cause more of a, an issue then, because at least with the point in the middle, I know exactly what it's locking in on. Um, so I, I find that that gave me more confidence shooting with that than eye detection. Inversely though, when I shoot portraits or events with people, I love eye detection. It's my, one of my, it's my favorite feature of it. So it just depends on what you're shooting. Um, John wants to know if I have any comments on the new lenses, which I will talk about in a minute. So I'll come back to that. Um, and Carl, I'll have to come back to you in a minute and ask you about that, uh, the double back button in here. So remind me when we cruise through this to, to come back to that. Um, hey Jeff, yeah. can I tell you about that setting I was telling you OC, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. for the eye detection? Yeah. So on the R6, <clears throat> I, I set it to, um, you can say face detection and you can say single point for right when you start you have it on single point. So you can say, focus in on this one player who is uh, who's either on the water polo or anybody. And then from there, go to, uh, to face detection and, and automatically adjust it from there. So it, it, you tell it who to prioritize to, what player to prioritize. So it doesn't change to the other person. And then it goes from there. Otherwise it just picks which one was the best one. And once I changed that setting, I, uh, I found it to be a little bit better. So it definitely helped out the cause. It, it wasn't 100%, but it definitely helped the cause. So if you are if you do go to, want, want to go to it later, it's on the, I have my camera here. It's the autofocus tab. So it's the, okay. the second uh, the tab in the purple one. Yep. And, then page and then page five. And then it's uh, initial servo autofocus point for face detection. And then you change that to the, the second option. Got it, which is the center point. It's a center point, yeah. So it kind of looks, can you see this there? Yeah. Yep, I'm on it. Looks like it's that option there. All right. So I'll that, try it, that. Yeah, it's, it's not an end all be all, but it definitely helped me out. Uh, I got that tip from, um, you know, uh, Tony Kurdzik in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave, gave me that tip. That was super helpful. <clears throat> yeah, Tony and Drew. Credit where credit is due. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tony and Drew are the two guys over there that know everything there is to know about these things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can bet that they're both. Have both been shooting with an R3 for a while now because you know I believe that yeah that's great thank you for that and um, yeah no problem I'll yeah, play no around sorry, sorry to interrupt <laughs> no no that's no, great I know that you told me that you wanted to bring that up so that's great that you did yeah yeah this, cool. is, this is all about sharing and and like I told people early on you know I don't I don't claim to know everything about everything um and I can tell you this when I do get an R3 in my hands I'll be spending a lot of time with Tony and Drew over Zoom probably um, cause I don't think I'm flying in New York, but, um, you know, just going through like, like with the one DX Mark three, I met up with, uh, with Drew and we spent probably a good hour with him showing me all the different things you could change on the camera and customize for what I wanted. And it, it matters. It really does. Yeah. I mean, 
yeah, yeah. They really know their stuff there with, with the, the specifics of the cameras. Yeah, there used to be a guy named Chuck Westfall in the old days, and Chuck was the master at Canon. He was, um, I mean, he was like a, a walking encyclopedia of anything Canon, and uh, he passed away of cancer. And um, it was just, a, you know, I mean, obviously a horrible tragedy for his family, but for all of us. So, but thanks for that. I do appreciate that. That's cool. Yeah, too. no problem. I'll try that and see how it goes. So, yeah, I hope it's good uh, for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of things to see. Um, uh, if you have uh, 45 or more megapixels and do not want a large file size, yeah, you can. You can um, so Lee is asking about um, using CRAW. So CRAW still is, it, it is a compressed RAW. Uh, sorry, Canon doesn't want me saying compressed RAW, but it is a, what do they call it? It's not compressed. They use a different word for it. Basically, it is a different algorithm for RAW that creates a file size that's about half the normal size. And in everything I've tested so far, I, I almost see no reason to shoot raw. But with that said, when I shoot, I usually shoot raw just because I don't mind the file size and I want the best quality image for my client. Although when I did my initial test on the R5 Nursex, I couldn't even see a difference. So um, I've been told that if you're shooting in a dark environment and, you, and, and you're trying to do things like denoising an image and stuff, that there is a difference. So, um, but for shooting like all the sports I just did, I could have shot that stuff in C-RAW with the R6 and didn't. Um, but, but the thing is, the reason I say I want a different megapixels is because there's also the ability, like it's not so much I want it for sp smaller file sizes, it's just that sometimes I don't need massive resolution. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I've ever printed an image, well, other than my images up in the billboards uh, at the Times Square in New York. I mean, most of my images get printed, you know, like someone has ordered some, you know, eight by tens. That's that's it, you know. Or if I post it on social media, I need like a half a megapixel, right? So, so um, this depends on what we're doing. And even for like the digital picture frame that's behind me, I mean, those are, you know, it's not that big of a frame. I could shoot those at four megapixels, would be fine. So. Um, so uh, Mac is asking for us to repeat what we went through uh, uh, on those settings. So uh, Zach, you and I, uh, send me an email. Put it in the, in the chat right now. Yeah, I'm doing that right no, now. Oh yeah, you put it in the chat. Yeah, that yeah. would be good. Um, yeah, I'm typing it as we speak. Yeah, no problem. Oh, all right, perfect. Great. And then I may even add that to the blog. I'll give you credit there. Um, <laughs> cool, thanks. <laughs> let's see here. So uh, Dave's asking what camera bodies I plan to take the Olympics. Um, I, I'll be honest with you guys, uh, I do plan on taking the R3. Um, there's a lot of rumor and talk right now, both on Canon rumors and other places, about when this when the, when this thing will become really available. Um, and obviously, I, I can't say too much at this point, but I can tell you that the, Canon did not announce the R3 to not have it available for some of us at the Olympics, right? So um you can bet that they made the announcement for a reason and um i've told them i'd like to have a camera in my hands at least six weeks before the olympics to be able to learn it to work with the guys there to get all the details and have it you know dialed into the way i want it i do suspect that that will be the case again i'm not under nda right now um so i can say that but my gut feeling is that i will have one here in May or June, and um, and that I'll be shooting with it at the Olympic Games. So uh, unless something dramatic happens, both with the Olympics or Canon, I think that will be the case. Um, so the 30 frames a second is interesting to me. I think even more interesting, and actually this goes back to what Zach was just saying. So we were talking about the fact that we wanted to track a specific subject with eye detection. And one of the things that they announced with the uh, with the R3 is it has eye control. And they had this in a previous film camera in the EOS 3, which I never used. But literally 30 years ago, there was eye control where it would track your pupil to determine which subject you wanted to focus on. I heard it worked relatively well. And of course, as I said to Canon on the phone last week, if it worked relatively well 30 years ago, with technology advancements that we have today, it should be freaking awesome now. So I'm holding them to it. <laughs> like, I mean, 
I'm just assuming it should be amazing. Because so if you look at what, what we're talking about, what Zach and I were just talking about, is eye detection is amazing, but but we want eye detection to be on our subject. So in the case of sports, it's a little easier because generally you'll only have maybe three or four athletes in the frame at the time. But if you're doing a group shot of a family portrait and you have 10, 12 people in the frame and, and they're different planes, I want to focus on someone maybe in the middle row at F5, 6 or whatever, so that the people slightly in front of them, slightly in back of them, everybody's in focus. I don't want to focus on the person of the front row or the back row because then the degradation between the front and back is too great. Well, with eye detection, I have to sit there and I have to back button focus and then I have to use the joystick and try to move the focal point off my center person to someone on the middle row. It would be really cool with the R3 if it just could track my pupil and I could just look at the person I want to focus on and lock it in because that would save me having to do the whole joystick thing. And typically when I'm shooting with the R6 and I'm doing a family portrait, I'll, and I usually talk as I'm shooting and I'll be like, okay, one second, let me just move my focal point right there. Great, everybody smile. Um, and then I count to three. Why is it all photographers? We can never get to four. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then we shoot, you know. And so um, I stop everybody and say, okay, well, hold on. I'm gonna move my focal point. Great, now I'm gonna shoot. And it'd be really great if it could just track my pupil. And so I'm really intrigued by that, not only for those types of environments, but of course in sports, it would be really cool if it could, if I don't have to sit there and move a joystick at all, I could just look at the athlete that I want to focus in, lock it in and go. That would be amazing. So um, that feature is incredibly interesting to me. Uh, I actually called Canon specifically about that feature to talk to him um, earlier this week. Um, so it's, I think it's one of those things that I need to get it in my hands and, and start playing with it. And um, my guess is that, um, you know, if I do get one to play with, there will be a period of time where I won't be able to share anything with you guys. Um, but then as soon as I can talk about it, I will. So that's kind of, and I'll blog it and do everything else as soon as I can. Uh, the other thing I was excited about, uh, well, mixed excitement on, um, Canon has not announced whether it uses what type of memory cards, what kind of batteries. Um, I have contacts in Japan that, do not work for Canon. Um, that if, uh, I've heard some rumors that it's that the camera is um, CF Express and SD. Um, mixed on that one, I prefer if it was dual CF Express. I wrote a blog about that, and that's what I would like to see. Um, I don't think it is. I think it's going to be CF Express and SD, which is okay. I'll shoot to the CF Express card. That'll be my main card because it's so much faster. And I'll use a really large SD card as the backup. Um, but I prefer to have two CF Express. And my guess is that with the R1, that that would be a dual CF Express card camera. I'm almost positive that it would be. Um, it just means for me, faster buffer clear because I write to RAW to both cards. It also means faster downloading, when, especially at the Olympics when I'm under those crazy deadlines. Every bit of speed matters. So. As far as the battery is concerned, um, you know, we've got the standard uh, batteries for the um, the 5D and the R series, and then get the bigger ones, let's see, get that in focus there, you know, for the 1D. Um, and I think my guess is, based on what I've seen of the images and some other things uh, people have talked to, I do believe it's gonna use the bigger battery. Um, so with that said, and I've said this in the past, the Canon R5 and R6, uh, I think Canon claims was like 350 images and I get well over a thousand or 2000. I mean, you can shoot the heck out of those cameras, uh, those batteries. So um, if it does use the bigger battery, I actually would be happy with that because when we're shooting uh, a lot of images like we are at the Olympics, I don't want to rely on a smaller battery. Although it'd be nice to have a lighter weight camera, but um, I, I believe it'll be the larger batteries. Um, so that's just... Uh, Let's see here. I'm just looking at here. Let's see here. So Zach's got all the information there. Thanks for doing that. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, um, John wants to know if I'll be trying any of the new lenses at the Olympics. Probably. Um, I don't know which ones. It's, it's kind of interesting. I'm not a big prime shooter with prime lenses. Um, 
So even though I have access to, I'll, I'm sure I'll have access to the 600, the new one, the RF uh, and the 400, but I actually like the 200 to 400, the lenses behind me, um, because when I shoot water polo, I love the fact that it's got the built, built in tele converter. So I can shoot when the athletes are in the pool close to me, I'll turn that off and I'll be shooting 200 to 400 and I'll be able to reframe and get rid of my shot. When they swim to the other side of the pool, I flip the switch and I'm now up to 560 millimeters. So I may use them. I just don't know how I'll use them yet. Um, and you know, if there, I, I don't think there'll be any new lenses there that have not been announced, but I don't know that either. If this, you know, it may be that sometimes I'll end up with prototypes of lenses there, which is a little bit riskier because you don't want them to fail on you when you're shooting, but um, that's possible. We'll see what happens. My, my guess is that that's not the case. Um, let's see here. 30 frames a second. Terrell says to 30 frames electronic. More excited. He's more excited that they're talking about 20 frames per second mechanical, um, right, which would be good for the lower tier pro camera. That would be interesting as well because um, the 30 frames per second is an electronic shutter mode. Although supposedly they are taking care of some of the anomalies that would happen when you shoot full electronic with the R5 and R6. Although I really haven't seen too much of a problem with that. Uh, Frank wants to know the price on the R3. I have not heard anything on price. I can tell you that if an R5 sells for like, what is it, 3,500 bucks, give or take, 3,800. Um, and the 1DX Mark III is at around, I think, six or 7,000. My guess is that the R3 would probably be in the, and it is a guess. Not, I have not asked Canon this, nor would they tell me anyway at this point, but I'm going to guess around 5,500. That's my guess. So we'll see if I'm right on that. Um, Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 difference between the uh, target for R3 and R1. Well, I think the R1, R1 is going to be, you know, the R1 is still a couple years away. Um, so, Charlie, I think that the R1 will be dual CF Express, even faster focusing, uh, possibly even more frame rate. But Jeff, what I meant is, what what is the target audience, the target photographer? Oh. What is the what do these uh, in the in pantheon of different capabilities? What what is the what are these intended to do? Yeah, it's, it's good. that's a good question. I, I honestly, I think that they're both designed. I think the R three is, I think they're both designed for the pro photographer. Um, they're both weather sealed. They're both, you know, industrial strength. They both have a lot of pro features. My guess is that they're both designed almost for the same person, but the R one's not available yet. Uh, so, for so the R five, R five is going to be essentially the prosumer, top line prosumer, and the other ones are more professional based. Yes, I would say the R five and R six are your your prosumer cameras, just like the five D and the six D were, and then the one one DX was up here. I think what we'll see now is. The R5, R6, or R, R5 and R6, and then you'll see R3, R1, R1 are kind of at your pro level. Because I, like I said, I think that the the R3 could have been called an R1 to a certain extent, but of course they're already working on an R1, is my guess. So this is kind of their stopgap uh, for this time frame uh, before they go to an R1. Uh, with that said, it looks like a great camera, so. Uh, let's see here. And Frank, uh, let's see. Uh, Terrell says that he hopes that the camera comes in under six grand. I think it'll be, I think it will be under six or about the, in that range. It will be very interesting to see. Um, as I mentioned, one of the things I'd, that I'm really curious on is the resolution uh, and how many megapixels it really is they're going to pack in there. Because again, the more megapixels you, you pack in, the more uh, digital noise you get as well. So uh, it'd be really cool if you could turn off, like I said before, it's not just about file size, but it'd be really cool if you could say, hey, I don't need 60 or 70 or 80 megapixels. I just want 20 right now. So you're only firing some of those sensors or some of the pixels on the sensor and therefore you're getting a much cleaner image. I don't know if that's possible, but it, kinda, it would be really cool if that was uh, possible. The one thing that I put in the blog um, when I put in my wish list for the R1, which now will translate to an R3 for this Olympic Games and Beijing as well, um, and Africa as well, would be um, how much better is the focus and what more can we do with it? 
So one of the things on the 1DX Mark III, as I mentioned, this camera, I mean, you know, it's it's a beast. It's when when you focus with this thing, you you just feel it snap. And it's interesting because when I went to Costa Rica in November, I didn't bring the 1DX. I only took an R5 and an R6. And when I was down there, there were times I was trying to shoot and it's really low light, very little contrast that you would typically have, let's say on the plains of Africa, very easy. You have a lot of ambient light and a lot of contrast. But sometimes in the rainforest, you don't have that. And I'll tell you what, the R5 and R6, they had trouble focusing many times. I know, because I've been down there enough with my 1DX, that the 1DX is like, boom, locked in and I got my shot. There was no hunting. So one of the things I said to Canon was, it, how much faster is this R3 going to be in its focusing ability over an R5 and R6? Um, for what I've been told unofficially, it will be better and more like what I'm seeing in the 1DX Mark III, maybe even better than that. I don't know yet, but it sounded to me like it's going to be, it's going to take the, the, the focus speed and accuracy even better than what, I mean, like markedly better than even than what we're seeing the R5 and R6, which is really damn good because other than uh, the sports stuff where I had some searching or in Costa Rica, it is dead on. Like for portraits, it's just unbelievably good. So um, I think that the focus abilities, speed and accuracy will be taken up even more of a notch. And again, with this pupil, with the eye control, that may even help with the autofocus and assist me taking that to the next level. So we'll see. Um, next point I have is on the RF lenses and someone asked if I'll be trying those. Like I said, I, my guess is I will be using some of those RF lenses when I'm there. Um, CPS will clearly have them to, look, to borrow at the Olympics. Um, and then it's just a matter of what I'm shooting and whether or not it makes sense. Um, I'm, like I said, I, I, I rely on Zoom so much because I really love reframing. Um, not everybody does, and I understand that. Some people like to just shoot always at 400. <clears throat> to me, if I'm shooting water polo um, and I'm shooting with a fixed focal length, I don't like the fact that sometimes things are too close or too far for me. So I'm always Zooming all the time. So that's just me personally. Um, let's see here. Uh, so uh, Charlie's asking on a different note, is there an RF to EF adapter allowing an RF lens to be used on older cameras? There is not, and there won't be, because it can't be put, can't be done. Um, so I do not see, think you'll ever see, unless there's some weird third party hack that comes out, Canon will not uh, provide that. I don't think anything backward compatible like that, which is interesting because right now I'm still using a lot of my L series lenses the 100 to 400, the 70 to 200. I have yet to switch to an RF on those. Um, my guess is when I make, when I do make that final switch all to mirrorless, uh, then then I'll switch out on my, all my lenses to RF. But at this point, I mean, shit, the 70 to 200 is so darn good, uh, version two, that uh, you know, it's a little bit bigger and heavier than the current one, but um, for now it works out and I can use it on all my cameras, which is good. Um, let's see here. Uh, Carol says, uh, the R3 cannot be any less than the current 1DX Mark III. That's disappointing hearing that the cards may not be both uh, CF Express. Yeah, I, I know I really wanted dual CF Express on that. I, I was really hoping that, that it would be, and I'm hearing it's not. Um, but you know, then I guess we'll have to wait for the R1. <laughs> There's always something that we want. Um, ah, the big question, John wants to know, do I think Canon's working on a RF 200 to 400 with a 1.4? That is a, the, my burning question. I have not asked Canon, and if I did, they probably would tell me, I'm sorry, we can't talk, talk about an announced product, but I am really, really curious about that. Um, the 200 to 400 is, is just an unbelievably great sports lens and wildlife lens. I would love to see something a little bit smaller, lighter, in the RF world. So um, fingers crossed, that would be really cool. Um, availability <laughs> of the R3. So um, like I said, lots of rumors on it. Um, again, I, I, I think it's, I'm gonna tell you that I'm about, 
as confident that I'll have a Canon camera in my hands as I am the Olympics happening. I think both will happen. Um, I think that, uh, I think the R3 will be out. Now, will it be shipping to the general public at the point of the Olympics? Maybe, maybe not. Will there be people shooting with it at the Olympics? I really, really believe that there will be, um, at least myself and, you know, either a handful of others or maybe more. But, you know, it reminds me of London. Um, in the London Olympics in 2012, the 1DX was coming out. And I believe it was 1DX, pretty sure. And, um, you know, they, they cut it so close that the only 1DXs in the world were all in London. And the only people shooting with them were the Olympic photographers. And so it may be that the timing is similar for this one in Tokyo. I mean, because we're literally, you know, like I said, less than three months away from leaving. So um, it might be that the plethora or the majority of them are all there and that they're not even shipping yet. But the good thing will be, um, I did, like I said, I think I'll have one, you know, at least a month in advance is my hope. And, uh, and that I can share with you guys the results of my testing uh, prior to leaving. So, and as I mentioned, I do plan on blogging in the three to four weeks prior to leaving, talking about what I'm going to take and why and how. And so it would be really nice to have the right gear that I'm going to take with me truly to show versus, oh, hey, I'll take a 1DX Mark III and then I don't because I've got an R3. So um, stay tuned. I will test them. Um, like I said, the, the, the goal is hopefully to get one prior to the Olympic Games here. So I have at least a month with it. Um, and then it'll just be a matter of whether I can talk about it or not or show images from it and all that. So, um, but like I said, you know, Canon did not, um, did not do a technology announcement and then not ship, you know, not have any, anybody shooting the Olympics with it. I think that would be crazy, especially when their competition at Sony and Nikon clearly have already done their announcements and are shipping. So, um, like I said, I think take that for what it is and, and uh, fingers crossed. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I plan on also taking some other new, new stuff with me, not from Canon, but from some other companies. And I can't say anything more than that, <laughs> but um, I had a discussion yesterday uh, with another large company and I'm really hoping, because uh, it'd be really cool to talk about. So um, that's all I can say at this point. So stay tuned. But um, you know, it's it's uh, the Olympics is always a great place to push products that help me get both the the shot I need, the workflow speed I need, and all of that. So, um, uh, how much do you like the new R? Um, uh, RF 100-28 macro. I have yet to shoot with that particular lens. I do shoot with the pre, the, the I do use the 100 um, EF macro or L series macro. And I really like that lens. Um, so my, like I said, my goal is over the next six months, if I do switch to all mirrorless to start switching out. And when you see my blog saying I'm selling my 7200, my 100, my 100, 400, or whatever it is, all of my L series glass, uh, then you'll know that I've made that that's my mirrorless switch, which I think will happen. It's just a matter of when. So I've not used it yet, so I can't give you the answer on, on how good it is. I can tell you this though, Canon has done an amazing job of coming out with RF lenses at a great speed. There, you know, it clearly is the future for them. And the quality of the glass in everything I've seen so far. So I shot with, I, I have the uh, RF 24 to 105. Uh, I shot with the RF 100, 500 and a couple of those. And I'll tell you what, they're tack sharp. And so um, I, I think that we're in for some really, really nice glass. So I'm excited about that. Hey, Jeff, yeah. I, I, I shoot a lot with the um, the 100 uh, macro and the the newer RF one is coming out with a little a couple of additional features which are haven't been seen in macro lenses. It's got a little bit more reach. It's actually not a one to one. It's a one point four to one, and it also has a, ch a new type of thing where you can change the bokeh, the oh, shape of the that. actual bokeh. I don't know how that's gonna. You know that may be more more important for portraitures than, than macro itself, but. Um, 
that's been such a good lens. I, I also expect, actually, I've ordered it. I expect that new one just to be as good or better than what we yeah. have. And what we have now is just excellent. Yeah, and I think that's that's what we've seen so far in everything that Ken is doing is that the, you know, they, they never come, they have yet to come out with lenses. Oh, this one's not as good as what we had in the L series or EF, right? And so, and honestly, with the, with the newer connection between the R series and our, our DSLRs, there's a lot more pinouts on that on the mount that allow it to do more things and focus faster or have some more features or put in the control ring and all these things. So I, I, I have very high hopes in those. And like I said, I do plan on switching. It's funny because the macro lens is a lens I don't use. I only use it for weddings when I'm here uh, or insects and stuff. And it's really mainly Costa Rica that I use the uh, macro. I use it a ton there and it would be fun uh, to try there and try off a new lens. And clearly um, on my next trip down there in December, um, I will be. So so I'm gonna, we're going from no travel for the last year pretty much to full bore. If everything goes as planned, it'll be, this next year is gonna be crazy. So uh, Olympics come home for six days then Africa for a month then out uh, and then back and then, uh, and then a couple other trips and then Beijing and then, so it's gonna be interesting and lots of chance to test a lot of different lenses and, and camera stuff, which will be really cool. Um, Lee says, what's my guess on the timing of the R1 development notice? So we might hold the side between the R1 and R3. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, I, I do believe the R1, and I did ask some questions about this because I asked, this, cause I'm curious about the same thing. I do believe the R1 will be for around the Paris Olympics, which would be 2024. So three, three years away, which means that the camera is probably still a couple years away is my guess. Don't know that for sure, but it clearly is not imminent. Um, we will not see, I can say this pretty confidently. You will not see an R3 announcement or technology announcement, which we saw the other last couple weeks ago, last week, and then two months from now, or three months from now, or even five months from now, an R1. It's farther out than that. So um, let's see here. Uh, John's out. He's got to talk to his grandkids in Australia. That takes precedent over us. Um, am I going to do more workshops? Mark, Mac wants to know. Yeah, so I just added a bunch. Um, let me see here. Wait, watch this. Let's see if we can. Da -da. Let's see. All right, screen share. We don't usually do that here. There. You guys got my, uh, hopefully you can see here the tour page, um, hopefully. Um, but I've got, uh, so Tanzania is coming up. Uh, that's after the Olympics. Then Botswana, which is already sold out. Then Costa Rica, December, which is also sold out. Then we have uh, uh, springtime in Japan, which will be, that's gonna be a great trip. And that one's already a go. We already, uh, that's actually down, I think to six spots left or four. Um, then another Costa Rica trip in 2022, May. Then we have Scotland and Ireland. Um, and then uh, Botswana after that. And then Tanzania for great migration. That's, uh, that, those are July. Then we go to Indochina in October next year then Costa Rica again right after that and then Cuba so and then the 2023 have not been yet announced but if you just go to jeffcable.com photo tours or just go to my Jeff, jeffcable.com and go to photo tours here and that'll take you there and you can take a look um it's interesting uh, one of the things that, that I've seen uh, as I mentioned at the top of this um uh, zoom call things are definitely picking up um, I went from a year of almost no clients asking for, I mean, I did senior portraits a little bit or family portraits, but you know, no events. And that's definitely picked up, um, getting a lot more inquiries, unfortunately not available for most of them, but they're coming in anyway. Um, and clearly for traveling, there's a lot of people who are itching to get on the road that have been holed up in their house for the last year and are looking to travel in 2022 or 2023. So um we will keep adding more trips as well and keep that going so 
Um, John wants to know if I've heard any comparisons between the new Nikon Z models and the R5 and R6, and, and is Nikon catching up? I'll be honest with you, um, I, I'm not familiar with the Nikon stuff. I've never really shot with it. Um, and I do know that uh, Nikon is now number three in the camera world. So now it's Canon number one, Sony number two, Nikon number three. Um, and Nikon, is, is, I think, has fallen a little bit behind. Don't, for those people who are Nikon shooters, this is not me being sponsored by Canon and saying that Nikon's not a good camera because they're very good cameras. Um, I just am not familiar enough to know, like I haven't really shot with the Sony stuff either. But you know, on photo tours, we have people that take, you know, I've got Fuji shooters and Olympus shooters and Nikon and Sony and everybody else. And honestly, any good camera with a good lens, you can take a good picture. So um, I'm just, you know, I'm not familiar enough because honestly, I got my hands full with all the Canon gear and trying to keep track of that. So <laughs> it's it's daunting in itself. So um, what questions do you guys have beyond those? Let me know. We can stay on here for a couple more minutes and, um, and answer anything else. And like I said, other than that, it'll be, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Because if, if I do go under NDA, um, obviously I won't be able to say anything more in any more details. But as soon as they let me talk about the camera and I, ha I have it and I can talk about it, I promise that I will do a, a blog post and then we'll do a Zoom call like immediately so that I can give you guys the update on the good, the bad and, and everything else. So that's where we are. I think it's exciting though. I think that um, just the what they're talking about in this camera, it, it, it's I knew that the R5 and R6 were not going to be Olympic cameras for me. I knew that if, if, if I had to go to the games today, I probably would have taken the 1DX Mark III as my, my sole camera or, or primary camera. So I am excited about the R3 because I think that it's going to give me the best of both worlds. It's going to give me what I do love about the mirrorless R series and with all the power and speed of the 1DX. They say that the R3 is in between the 1DX Mark III and an R5. I think what they're trying to do is protect a little bit the 1DX series but I do believe it'll be as good as the 1DX Mark III and what it provides with mirrorless features. So, so I am relieved and excited about that. And um, like I said, as soon as I can say something, I will. Um, so how am I going to receive my Olympic swag if I don't travel to New York City to pick it up? I never get Olympic swag there. Um, uh, my swag will come when I'm in, uh, in Tokyo. So, or sometimes beforehand, I'll get some stuff. I've already got some stuff uh, for the Olympics, like t-shirts and stuff from the team that are upstairs, but um, the good stuff, I'll, I'll have to beg, beg for it when I get to Japan. <laughs> That's the plan. Uh, anyone else feel the back button focus is a bit redundant when using eye detect? Um, yeah, Terrell, it is. It, it, so back button focus is redundant when you use eye detection because with eye detection, as you're shooting, it's still tracking but I still use it and still just by habit, I still back button focus with it. Um, and so I don't know, I, it's not as necessary. Uh, and when I shoot events and I've been shooting uh, over the last uh, month or so, I've been doing more uh, local events like bar mitzvahs. So I'm in the back of a temple and I'm using, believe it or not, an R6 because it's so quiet with a 200 to 400 which is a bit overkill when you're at someone's bar mitzvah, but you know, you got it, you know, as we shoot with it. Um, and the other thing that really sucks, by the way, is I, so I'm, I'm using the, the reason I brought that up is I use a remote trigger, just the cabled, no pun intended, the cabled trigger um, on the R6. And, uh, and of course the eye detection is still tracking my subject up front. This one temple I've been shooting at because of COVID and because people are singing, they put these giant sheets of plexiglass in front of the kid doing their bar mitzvah and it's not non-reflective. And so I told the people at the temple, I'm like, can you guys come up with something better than this? Cause I mean, here I got this, you know, I'm shooting with like $18,000 worth of camera gear, trying to get the best image possible for him. And I'm trying to move like two or three inches in either direction, depending where the kid is. So I don't get the lights reflecting through the plexi. It's brutal. Um, but I do use the, the, little remote trigger um, and it is kind of nice to watch the still the point stay on the kid's eye as I'm shooting. So um, 
Let's see here. Uh, Max says, uh, have I ever used M uh, MyOps triggers? No, I don't think so. Um, what uh, I just use, here's the thing with my triggers. I use the cheapest mechanical trigger. I got from B and H one of the inter inter intervalometer triggers and all this crap, and it had to have its own battery. I'm like, I don't want that. I literally went on Amazon and I ordered one for like. So I went. I was at the temple shooting. I went to hook up my uh, my um, the trigger, and I realized that the trigger for the 5D and the 1DX is a different style than the R, which is more of like a headphone jack kind of trigger. So I couldn't do one. So I sat there in the temple and got on the Amazon app and ordered it. And by the time I got home the next morning, it was already at my house. So it was like $8. So I like very simple remotes that are wired. I don't want wireless. I just need something really, really easy. And, and I don't want to deal with more batteries. So it's just the simplest possible thing. And the only thing that drives me crazy is when they have the thing where you push in and up and it keeps firing. Because I do that by mistake sometimes. I actually would prefer one that doesn't even have that, where I can just trigger it one at a time and don't even have the lock on it. Because I hate it when I do it by mistake and end up taking an extra 25 images. So um, Terrell's spying on my equestrian picture behind me. Uh, yeah, you know, everybody keeps asking me when I'm going to do a workshop for sports. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've talked to Peter Reed Miller and Terrell Lloyd about doing it. I need to do it. That picture behind me, the metal picture, um, from the Olympics is actually one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. And it's funny because people ask me if I have a favorite and usually I don't. Um, that one there is just one of my favorites just because everything came together like perfectly in that one moment. So uh, Zach wants to know, let's see here. Oh, oh sorry, um, I have used the Canon mobile app for triggering, but, but there's a serious delay. It's great for starting and stopping video recordings. It is also good for shooting something, if I'm doing like a macro shot, you can use it. I don't use it for anything like an event because by the time you use the app on your iPhone and you hit shoot, you might have you might be a lag of a, a second or whatever and you've missed the image. So I don't use it for that. Uh, Zach says, do I ever use electronic first curtain shutter? I do actually, almost always I use electronic first curtain shutter which is kind of the default on the R6 and R5. And um, I use that almost solely, I almost never turn that off. So that, that's the mode that, and I have not seen a whole lot of weird anomalies, even when shooting sports where, you know, the ball can be more oblong. I have yet to see anything that's that distracting. So, um, and like I said, I don't usually shoot baseball. I put this in the blog uh, that I pushed yesterday. I'm not a big baseball photographer. Um, and so it was kind of new to me going out there and shooting it. But even then, like the one thing I learned is you can't be shooting a thousand of a second because that ball is coming in so hot and so fast that you need to be a lot faster than that to freeze that ball. So I noticed that early on in the shooting. So I immediately changed uh, ISO up to about 400 to get me a shutter speed of about 4,000th of a second. And then I was able to kind of freeze it better. And someone actually sent me an email this morning saying, did you screw up on the blog? Did you mean to say ISO 4,000, not 400? And I said, nope, it was 400 because again, I was shooting in daylight. So when you're shooting in bright light and ISO of 400, you're going to get a really fast shutter speed. So Whew. there you go. Um, if you guys have any more questions, fire away, send me an email, let me know. Um, I will, uh, like I said, if I get any information on the uh, R3 that I can talk about or any other new products, um, I will let you guys know. I do believe that uh, there will be probably two other companies that I'll be testing some products with in the Olympics. Um, and one of them is really, really cool. I'm praying it's ready by Tokyo. It may not be ready until closer to Beijing, but we'll see. Um, Cause you guys would be definitely interested in that too. Um, so it's not just, not just the Canon stuff, but um, we'll see. And then uh, as far as um, other accessories that I'll be taking with me, I know like I'm, I'm meeting up with the people at ProGrade Digital on um, next week to get more memory cards from them. I do believe I'm gonna to wanna to get some higher capacity SD cards that are fast, get a little bit more CF Express cards in preparation for the Olympics and also more SD because I'm shooting the R6 so much right now. So that's going on too. They have, um, they just came out with new software um, that uh, 
It's called, I'm supposed to remember this. Hold on, guys. Applications. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, it lets me, it's, um, God darn it. I'll find it, I promise. I have a lot of apps. That's not it. Darn it. Recovery Pro. And what Recovery Pro does is it tell it, it any any of their cards uh, that's got the R on it. I don't know if you can see the little R there. Um, if it has the R on it, it can be used with Recovery Pro. And one of the cool things is it'll tell you the life of your card. So it'll tell, hey, this one's got 90% still left on it, um, usability wise. Um, but also lets you do a complete refresh on the card. So you guys all know that when you use memory cards and you format the camera, it still leaves stuff behind. So when you do uh, Recovery Pro, you can literally put it back to factory refresh, like a complete refresh and wipe of the card. So I've been doing that on all my cards. Um, I've got, I just got the software last week. So that's pretty exciting and pretty cool. So my plan is to refresh every memory card that's sitting here on my desk and get those all set and ready. So that's kind of cool and new. Um, and uh, we'll see, uh, like I said, what other new good stuff I can bring out of the woodworks to tell you guys about. With that, I will uh, catch you guys all later. Everybody stay safe. I will be getting my vaccine in three hours and probably be sick for the next couple of days. So we'll see how that goes, but I'll be happy about it anyway. So stay tuned on the R3. I, like I said, I'm excited. I, I, I can't wait to get my hands on one. So fingers crossed that it's in the next, you know, month plus, I don't know, six weeks or so. So stay tuned. You guys have a good week good couple weeks and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Peace out. <laughs>